Hey guys, welcome to the Business Life Podcast, where entrepreneurs realize that your business is a way of life, the business life. I am Mark Ford, business coach, author, and speaker, helping you attract the customers you and your business really deserve and want. And we're gonna do this without any fluff, any flannel whatsoever. There are no silver bullets here simply because they do not exist. And I'm here to turn your business into a customer machine, attracting the right people uh, to come to your business and then making them spend their money with you. And attracting those perfect customers starts in your head. It always starts with you. And let's be fair, if we start there with you, the business owner, if you get those ideas right, that is when the magic starts happening. <laughs> so one of the key ideas is to look today at how people see you. We've all driven past those businesses that look very dated with the 1960s writing and uh, tires outside and sort of rubbish piled up at the side of the building. Um, and we've all met those people at networking events where they look like they've just got a stick up their ass. <clears throat> Here's the thing, we've all made a decision based on those facts. So today, we are gonna be talking about branding. Now, you have worked very long and hard and you've sacrificed a hell of a lot to build a solid reputation. When you're out the room, you kind of know what people are already talking about. They're saying, he's a really good accountant, she's a really good lawyer, he's a top person to have around, he's got a hell of a, or she's got a hell of a lot of knowledge, that type of thing. But what if you wanted to rebrand yourself? But what if you needed to rebrand yourself? Because you need to start attracting the right customers for you and your business. Now people reinvent themselves all the time. Take on a new challenge, um, a shift into more meaningful work, or rebut previous perceptions that have hindered your business progress. Sometimes the changes are major, i.e. like a financial services manager moving into becoming a retail manager or a venture capital capitalist becoming a life coach or something like that. <clears throat> Sometimes the rebranding is subtle as an executive who wants to advance but needs to overcome the knockback that they've got, which is that they're not good with numbers. So taking control of your personal brand might mean the difference between an unfulfilling job and a rewarding career, or a stalled business and a really successful one. Your path may make complete perfect sense to you, but how can you persuade others to embrace your new brand and take you seriously. Now I've just gone through my own rebranding and in the past I've helped coach other businesses um, as they've looked to take their business in a new direction, whether it's subtly or, or majorly, and there seem to be five key steps to reinventing and rebranding yourself in a very, very busy marketplace so that you can attract the customers that you want. Now remember, they could be small or large changes, but they all center around these keys, these five keys to unlocking your customer potential. Let's go with number one. Define your destination. Now, rebranding isn't easy. And if your plan is poorly thought out, you'll end up confusing yourself and others. So start by determining where you really, really want to invest your energy. Check out your relevant industry trade journals, work out who your ideal client or customer is, and then look out for the white elephant in the room so you can help those people with that problem. If you're looking to advance or shift laterally within your industry, seek out a mentor who you think can guide you. Next, you'll need to build the necessary skills for your brand new path. I'll give you an example. If you've been a game developer uh, for the past decade, you probably understand the technology better than anybody else in your company or in, in your business. But if you wanna move into video game marketing, technical savvy really isn't enough. 
You need to ask yourself what else you need to know and how do you learn it. This also means expanding your own knowledge base. Don't be fooled into thinking that you can wake up one day and set yourself up as a guru, a speaker or anything without doing some of the hard yards first. Learning the skills you'll need will give you a confidence, a real genuine confidence about publicizing your new identity and the credibility required to assume it. Look, I got my MBA when I was 41. I wrote my first book at the age of 40. I'd run my own successful business and I'd started by consuming everything I could get my hands on, my ears on and even my ears listening to. Learning is not just for school kids, kids. Number two, leverage your point of difference. What is your unique selling point? That's what people will remember and you can use it to your advantage. Now, I tend not to be able to go through a podcast, a blog or a story or a video or anything without mentioning Apple. So here comes my obligatory Apple story. So think about it. With the success of the iPod and the iPhone, Apple products were the pinnacle of 21st century cool. But it wasn't always that way. Back in the 1990s, Apple products had about as much street credibility as shell suits and Noel's house party and Mr. Blobby all thrown into one. Thanks to stiff competition, a computing market from rivals IBM, Dell, HP, it had got really crowded, really chaotic, and the Apple themselves were so close, dangerously close, to being made bankrupt in 1997. It was up to the rehired Chief Executive Steve Jobs to turn the company's fortunes around, and boy, didn't he. His most important move in his mission to revamp Apple's naff image, and it was a naff image, for a brand new generation of tech lovers was to launch a very clever advertising campaign called Think Different. The drive challenged customers to see Apple as a lifestyle choice which reflected their own individuality. And it worked. Apple is worth billions of dollars, possibly even over trillions. Now, Steve Jobs took a radical step by ruthlessly, I mean ruthlessly focusing on what made people care about them and stopped trying to emulate what other people were doing. If they just carried on making the same computers at that point, it would have just been an advertising campaign, plain and simple. But what they were signaling was a completely different change in tack a really bold step into a new type of computer. It was about making the ideal rule, the idea real, real, I will get my teeth here. It was about making the idea real through what you say, what you do, and what you make. It was not just an empty claim. It was their point of difference that made them stand out to brand new customers. Three, develop a narrative. Now you used to write award-winning business columns and now you want to write restaurant reviews. You used to paint walls for a living and now you want to do graphics on the sides of cars. It's human nature to have many, many interests, to seek new experiences and want to develop brand new skills. Unfortunately, however, people often view that as a sign of dilettant. It's unfair, but to protect your personal brand, you need to develop a coherent narrative and explains exactly how your past fits into your present. So, you could be saying, in the case of the guy that's gone from business columns to to uh, wanting to write about restaurants. I'm just using this as an example here. Um, I used to write about the business side of many industries, including food and wine. Now, I realized that my big picture knowledge of agriculture, trends and business finance uniquely positioned me to cover restaurants with a fresh perspective. 
It's a bit like a job interview. You're turning out what could be perceived as a weakness, i.e. doesn't really know anything about food because he's been a business reporter for 20 odd years, into a compelling strength that people will remember. So he's got a very different take on the food industry because he's got the knowledge that most of the other reviewers haven't got. The key is not to explain your transition in terms of your own interests. So I was bored of my job and decided to try something else, or I'm on a personal journey to find myself. But to focus on the value that your prior knowledge and prior experience brings to this particular field. Now, this is, this is particularly relevant for anybody who's watching this or listening to this uh, that have come out of college or university, whose, let's be fair, their early career opportunities are, tend to be hampered by lack of experience, lack of knowledge, etc. A stint flipping burgers may not be the ideal resume builder, but you can get a huge amount of credit for learning valuable skills on the front line of a customer service organization if you tell your story really well. One caveat is that your narrative must be consistent with your past. Politicians are absolutely pillared for obvious poll-driven personality changes. And you too will be called out fast if you're seen as abandoning your roots, shading the truth, or not acknowledging your history. Successful rebranding doesn't involve inventing a brand new persona. It's a shift in emphasis that should prompt others to say, yeah, okay, I can see you doing that. Four, reintroduce yourself. Hello. Uh, once you've embraced your rebrand, making new contacts is the easy part. It really is. They'll just take the new you at face value. The hardest log is reintroducing yourself to your existing network. The truth is, the vast majority of people aren't paying much attention to you whatsoever. That means their perceptions are probably a few years out of date. And to be fair, it's not their fault. With hundreds or thousands of Facebook friends and vague social connections, we can't expect everyone to remember the details of all our lives. So we have to just strategically, I'll say that word properly, strategically, re-educate our friends, our acquaintances, because they're going to be our buyers, our recommenders, or leads for brand new business. So first, make sure that all your contact points, Facebook, LinkedIn, personal website, and so on, are consistent and up to date. A key thing to do when rebranding yourself is to roll out a new website and e-newsletter to ensure that you are sending clients and colleagues the right message. Don't forget, to reach out by phone or email to all the people on your list individually to let them know about your new direction and where appropriate to ask for help, advice or business. So like, probably a good idea is to start off with a blast email going Ta -da! Uh, for the start. But you know what I'm thinking, they often go unread. So you have to try that a little bit harder. In some cases, your reintroduction may also involve addressing negative perceptions and being disciplined about sticking to your brand new behaviors and that will better reflect your new aspirations. Get out there, get networking. You should immediately get a 90 day networking plan in place, armed with a brand new word perfect introduction and ideas as to who you want to meet and who you want to talk to. Five. Prove your worth. Every art student has a portfolio ready to be shown at a moment's notice. You can just see them wandering around with it. It's all over the place. And it should be no different in a business world. There's a wide gulf between my knowing that you've launched a new business and trusting that you'll do a good job for any of your clients. I may really like you an awful lot, but unless I see proof, of your skills. I'll hesitate to put my own reputation on the line by giving you referrals. That's where blogs, podcasts, videos, um, and other forms of social media 
come into effect. The first step is securing your own internet domain name and starting to produce unique intellectual property. The second, even more critical, <laughs> is about making sure that that material offers real, genuine value. You can quickly establish your expertise if you help solve a problem or do something better than it's already out there. Sharing the content that you've already created allows potential customers or employers to test drive your approaches before making that large commitment. And if you're a graphic designer, having context check out an image gallery of say corporate logos, an example that you've created may inspire one of them to send you a brand new major account. And after you've demonstrated your ability, solidify your rebrand by associating with the leading organizations in your field. Make a focused effort to publish in respected journals and websites, speak at industry conferences, or take on any leadership roles you can in your trade associations or your networking groups. The resulting visibility, connections, and credibility can play massive, massive dividends for you. Finally, finally, you have to be committed and consistent as you move forward. A desire to expand into international work, as an example, is utterly pointless if you haven't bothered learning the language or the nuances of the particular countries that you want to work with. Just remember, you are in an internet era and traces of your old brand will never ever completely disappear. And as long as you're thoughtful about what you've learned along the way, do you know what? That's okay, that's fine. The challenge is to be strategic about identifying how you wish to be perceived, developing a compelling story that explains your evolution, and then spreading that message. Consider it the search engine optimization for your life and for your business. The more connections you make and the more value and content you regularly add to the stream, the more likely it is that your new brand will be known, recognized and sought out. So there you go. It's a quick guide to rebranding. It is only a start. It is not the end. It is not the end. But the whole point of these podcasts are to start giving you ideas and to make you think about how you can turn you and your business into a customer attraction machine. Talking of turning yourself into a customer attracting machine, um, I'm running um, a free video course, and it's a free, free, nothing, zero, zilch, nothing, video course on attracting more of the right customers to your business quickly and without spending a shed load of money. Four videos sent daily. They're only gonna be five minutes long. Uh, we all have short attention spans, so the fact you're still here watching this, well done you. Um, but it gives you some quick ideas to implement about attracting the right customers. And I mean the right customers and the ideal customers to your business. There is a link down below. So go to the webpage, Drop me your details and you'll get a video a day for four days with three really simple things for you to evaluate, work on and implement within your business to get those ideal customers flocking, and I mean flocking, to you and your business. Okay, so guys, otherwise there is an absolute load of stuff on uh, my website markford.uk go and have a look loads of ideas to help you grow your business get those customers and clients coming to your business and to be able to sell with them sell to them without selling to them with confidence which is great so until next time just remember this one thing remember the customer is the most important person on your payroll until next time take care Bye -bye. <laughs>